Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library. And today I have a great guest on because, you know, we're going to talk about a topic that I think every business should be aware of because a lot of times businesses, they just don't understand this area. And to be completely honest with you, there are a lot of accountants that don't understand the area of, you know, state taxes. And there are just a lot of things there that business owners should be aware of. Maybe not necessarily all of the details, but at least having a framework of knowing, hey, when do you need to reach out to get help and insight in this area? So I want to welcome to the show, Jack Schmall. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Terrell. Um, happy to be here. I appreciate the, the opportunity to kind of talk a little bit about what I do in, in state and local tax in general. So appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, before we jump into talking about your firm, can you tell us a little bit about what was your background before starting your firm? Yeah, I'd be happy to talk about that. My background, um, when I came out of college, um, I went to work for the Washington State Department of Revenue uh, in Seattle. Um, spent nine years actually working there, audited a, a wide variety of companies. Um, Washington has a sales tax and they have a gross receipts tax. So they don't have an income tax. But, um, so I audited you know, all over the board, construction companies, high-tech companies, um, aerospace companies, um, kind of across the board. Um, so I got a good background in various types of businesses. Also, obviously, a very good background in, in applying sales tax. Um, spent nine years there, and then I went into public accounting, also in the Seattle area. I uh, spent nine years at a, at a regional firm there. Ended up managing the state and local tax group. Um, worked over again a lot with sales tax as well as income and franchise taxes. Uh, so I've been entrenched in that state tax space for a long time. Um, from the Seattle area, we moved to Charlotte in 2009. I uh, went to work for another uh, regional firm here, running their state local tax practice. Uh, then in 2012, January 2012, I started my own firm, um, but not my own. And uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, there's been some ups and downs, you know, as I think there is with any new business. But you know, that's how I ended up in business for myself is, you know, spending a lot of time gathering that experience, um, you know, in state and local taxes. And then finally getting up the gumption to, to do it on my own. Now, one of the things you don't always hear about it that, you know, accountants going into, you know, specializing in state and local taxes, like, so wherever you went, were you like one of the very few that were specializing in that? Um, yeah, I was a bit of a unicorn. Um, yeah, they, there was, you know, the groups, that, you know, like the, the firm that I was with in Seattle, you know, I think there was a hundred, over a hundred people. Um, there were between three and four state and local tax people at the firm at any time. Um, when I went to work for the regional firm here uh, in Charlotte, um, we had I think maybe a maximum of three um, people at any time. You know, so even a good sized firm like, like those, you know, there's not a lot of people in the state and local tax specialty area. Um, and once you get below firms that size, there's essentially nobody that specializes in state and local tax. Um, mm -hmm which is where I saw my opportunity. Gotcha. And one of the things that I find, you know, even as a CPA myself, is just this realizing that as you, you really start to talk to some of the firms and I'm always a little hesitant when, you know, a firm tells me, oh, we do it all because I'm like, you know, accounting is so complex in so many areas that if you're doing everything, you're probably right. not doing a great job at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think that's, that's definitely an issue. Um, you know, you see a lot of the, I don't know, I don't want to say old, old time, but older, older um, mindset of accounting is that, you know, I'm a, I'm a generalist. I do everything. Um, you know, I don't think that's a very effective way to do business anymore. Uh, to think that, like you said, that, you know, I can do audits, I can do tax, I'll help them with their state tax issues. You know, maybe I'll do some valuation work for them. Um, you know, you're not going to get, um, your, your clients aren't going to be served the way that they need to be served in that kind of generalist environment. Now, something I thought was very interesting in the, the state and then local tax um, area is when the Wayfair decision came out, kind of where were you in kind of like your, your career? Were you deep into sales and local taxes when the Wayfair decisions came out and as the rules started to unfold for that? Uh, yeah, I've been following it very closely. 
Um, you know, and prior to that, there was what's called the Streamlined Sales Tax Project, where the states were trying to basically get to the Wayfair point with um, through the through the Congress. Um, so, I mean, this is an issue that you know, basically, my entire career has been, you know, kind of bubbling. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I was obviously very deep into state and local tax when that Wayfair decision came out. Um, you know, almost a year and a half ago now, um, but. Uh, you know, I guess it, what was surprising to me about the Wayfair decision, and yes, you know, maybe a little trivial to everyone else, was that the Supreme Court just came out and said, hey, we got the old decisions wrong. We were wrong in this previous case, Quill, which was kind of the basis mm -hmm. for all the tax planning I did during my career. Um, they didn't say like, hey, the economy's changed, technology makes these things different. They just said, hey, we were wrong. We were wrong in Quill in 1992. We were wrong in this previous case in 1967. Um, so we're just fixing things. Um, so that was really surprising to me that the way it came out, um, the result wasn't so surprising to me. Um, you know, one of the disappointments, I guess, of it coming out through a Supreme Court case as opposed to through congressional action is that because it came through a court case, the states have the ability to kind of do what they want. Um, you know, the court blessed South Dakota's way of imposing nexus or uh, sales tax collection responsibility based on dollar sales. Uh, but all states aren't required to follow that same, those same rules. And so they're not. So there's a wide variety of ways that, mm -hmm. that this is being applied across the states, uh, which makes it very confusing for, for taxpayers trying to comply. And that's one of those areas that, that I tell the, uh, I guess, state business owners is when it comes down to state and local taxes that, you know, that it is quite complex um, for an individual state. But then when you start doing business over state lines, it's just the complexity just begins to compound. So in your firm, when you're working with people at state and local, do you focus on a specific state or do you cover multiple states? Yeah, you know, I cover multiple states. Um, you know, my, you know, obviously I have a lot of experience in North Carolina, um, South Carolina, Washington, of course, because I was with the Department of Revenue there. Um, but I really focus on providing services for all the states. Um, you know, I do a lot of research projects, you know, for example, figuring out the taxability of a product, um, the client may be selling, um, you know, maybe they're selling some sort of a, some sort of a digital good, some sort of software type service, um, services in general can be, you know, taxed quite differently by different states. You know, so I do a lot of work in that area. I do a lot of work in figuring out where they have to be filing for income, franchise, sales tax, whatever the, the tax type is. You know, what is your responsibility for filing in other states? Um, you know, I do some appeal work um, and audit representation for other states as well. Um, so I'm, you know, my firm covers, you know, all the states, not just, you know, the Carolinas or, or a small batch of states around us. Gotcha. So as you're yeah. working with, um, different businesses. Do you find that um, many of them are surprised when you're doing kind of that research or you're educating them like, hey, you know, it, there are some tax implications, some state and local tax implications to this? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of surprise. Um, you know, there's a lot of confusion about what you need to do to create a filing requirement in another state. A lot of people think that, hey, I don't have to file taxes unless I have an actual store. In a particular state, um, and you know that's generally not required that you have a physical location. Um, you know, there's a federal law that applies to income tax that allows you to go into a state and do certain things without creating a filing requirement. Um, but those same protections don't apply to um, sales tax or franchise tax or some of the gross receipts taxes. Um, but people think that those income tax exclusions apply to all taxes. So. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion, um, I think, out there, a lot of wrong assumptions, you know, and not only just with, with business people, but also with other, other CPAs that, you know, haven't, haven't had the joy of spending 28 years in state and local tax like I have. So if someone has some questions about, you know, their, their state and locals, local taxes, you know, what's the best way for them to reach out to your firm, to get in touch um, to, or to, to, to start asking questions or to develop that relationship with your firm? Sure. Um, I have a website. Um, it's schmallcpa, 
um, dot com. So that's S C H M O L L C P A dot com. Uh, they can email me at J Schmall at Schmall CPA dot com. Um, or, or give me a call 704-661-5164. Um, I'm very responsive to those types of things. I'm not, uh, my company is not really active on social media at this point. Um, you know, but very active at returning calls and responding to emails. Gotcha, gotcha. So one, one particular area that I was interested in that I think that a lot of a lot of the listeners and, and I think just different people have, have have experienced this year with with all of the, the stay at home orders and, and the, the delivery or switching some of their products to delivering them digitally. You know, you know, have have you seen a lot of, you know, you say state and local tax considerations that are new to a lot of businesses in those areas? Uh, yeah, really where I've seen a lot of, lot of things that are new to, to businesses are in the areas of, of what, what taxes do I now need to withhold because you know, I had all North Carolina payroll uh, and now I have people in South Carolina or you know, I've never had an employee before um, living in Oregon, uh, but now I do because they're working from home. You know, do I have to withhold Oregon income tax now for those people, even though my business is located in Washington? Um, and so a lot of states have come out and said, you know, hey, if you temporarily have somebody in our state, for example, um, we're not going to treat that as to be as as creating a, a filing requirement. Um, other states like North Carolina just haven't said anything. You know, so theoretically, if you're a business in Virginia and you now have an employee in North Carolina because they're working from home, um, North Carolina is going to expect an income tax return. They're going to expect you to start collecting sales tax. Um, they're going to expect you to, to withhold North Carolina income tax from that person. Um, so it's really on a state by state basis who's kind of made accommodations for these situations to try to lessen the impact on businesses. Uh, you know, some of them are temporary. Some expired in November, for example. Um, you know, so those at this point are of limited help. Um, so we've seen a lot of that. Um, I don't know if I've seen so much the the switch to digital delivery. Um, I guess I have some. Of it. I haven't seen a huge impact on that. Uh, we still have the same issue. You know, first off, you have uh, this term nexus, which I think I mentioned a couple times. That's the connection you need to have to be subject to a state's tax. Um, and you know, so if you're delivering digitally, you know, still it's do I have nexus, and then you have to determine. You know, is that digital product taxable in that particular state? Um, you know, so I guess what I have seen, the other thing I've seen a lot of is uh, businesses that have traditionally gone to visit their customer uh, to provide services. So that was always a nexus creating activity for them. You know, we, we fly out to Ohio to visit our customer. That automatically creates, um, you know, probably creates an income tax nexus depending on what you're selling as well as sales tax. Uh, but now we're not going to Ohio anymore. You know, at what point do we get to stop filing tax returns in Ohio uh, and collecting tax? So you know, a lot of questions around that. Hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll get things cleaned up so people can fly to Ohio or wherever they want to go again. And, you know, these issues will kind of self-resolve. But that's something I've been you know, hearing a lot of lately. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, Jack, before we wrap up, one question I like to ask every guest that comes on when you think about, you know, your journey of, you know, going from, you know, working in with the IRS in Washington to, you know, navigating through firms and then starting your own firm and just the interaction you have with clients now and different businesses, what's two pieces of advice that you would share with other business owners? Oh, um, that's a good question. You know, I guess, you know, one of them, I guess, with other business owners, for me, the key was identifying my market um, and then finding a way to get to them. And it was not a direct route for me. Um, you know, my market is businesses, businesses with state and local tax problems. Um, so for me to market directly to them, uh, would have been very difficult. That's a huge, you know, obviously a huge span of companies would potentially have those problems. And it's hard to identify from the outside which companies have those problems. Um, so what I did is instead of marketing to them directly, I marketed to their accountants, to their CPAs, because uh, their CPAs have that kind of vision into the company and what's going on. They can raise those concerns. Um, 
and then they can bring me in to help resolve them. Um, and so that is the way that I have found to get to my market. It was a little unconventional. It wasn't direct. Um, but to me, that was the key. I had the expertise. I had the ability to do the work, but I had to find a way to the market. Um, so that's probably one. And then I guess the other one is, you know, just kind of, you have to be patient and you have to trust the, pro trust the process. Um, you know, patience was key. You know, you've got to build trust and in, in, in my case, and essentially referral sources who are going to refer their clients to me. Um, you know, so I had to do a lot to build that trust. I did a lot of speaking, those types of things, you know, speaking at CPA events and uh, different things to get my name out there, to get myself noticed as somebody who actually knew what they were talking about. Um, you know, and then even with that, there was a lot of patience involved because then you had to wait for those people to have an issue that you could help them. With. Um, so, you know, patience was, was definitely key for me. It was very frustrating at times, but in the end, it's paid off. Awesome. Well, Jack, thank you so much for coming on the show, for sharing your story and a little bit of insight on, you know, state and local taxes. And I would say to any of the listeners, I mean, if you're running a business, um, you should definitely talk to a firm like Jack's because state and local taxes, I mean, the rules for federal taxes are completely different at times from state and local taxes. And you need someone that actually understands it, that can give you the right advice, the right context around that. So Jack, thank you for coming on the show. Great. Thank you, Terrell. Thank you for tuning in to the Business Talk Library. If you like our content, be sure to follow us on social media. And if you want to see more of our exclusive content, you can subscribe and become a member on patreon.com forward slash business talk library. Hey, the Business Talk Library is the place where business makes sense.